That's in the legislature. State Rep. Annalise Ortiz and other Democrats chanting at Republicans for ending discussion and adjourning amid attempts to repeal a near total ban on all abortions looming after Arizona's Supreme Court upheld an abortion ban dating back to 1864. Former President Trump said while campaigning that Arizona ban goes too far and it will be straightened out. Former President Trump's first stop in Georgia, Chick-fil-A, where he urged Atlanta's black community to back him. I've done more for the black community than any other president since Abraham. Lincoln. Trump, who lost Georgia in 2020, is back in the state to raise money. Fox's Mark Meredith in Atlanta in New York. A third Trump attempt this week to delay his first criminal trial was rejected by a judge. He calls it election interference. Jury selection is supposed to start Monday. The former president charged with falsifying records related to 2016 payments to keep quiet an affair he denies having. At the White House, President Biden honored Japan's prime minister at a state dinner. We've been brought together the same hopes the same values, the same commitment to democracy and freedom. Today, they and the president of the Philippines will hold talks on threats China poses, threats that the FBI director Christopher Wray may discuss at a House hearing. Wray says the FBI opens a new investigation into China every 10 hours. Some of those investigations could be opening right here in the United States after a surge of Chinese nationals crossing the southern border near San Diego, home to the U.S. Navy's Third Fleet, two Marine Corps bases, and West Coast SEAL teams. Fox's Lucas Tomlinson, one person's dead and five injured after a shooting in Washington, D.C. Several others were hurt when gunfire interrupted a Muslim end of Ramadan celebration in Philadelphia. The Biden administration is finalizing new rules to expand background checks on more firearm sales like online and at gun shows. America's listening to Fox News. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. A wrench thrown in the works in Congress on a key national security tool. 19 Republicans voted against advancing a bill to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, which the intelligence community says is vital to stopping terror threats. Populist Republicans like Chip Roy of Texas were against the bill because it lacked a requirement for a warrant. The American people are tired of the same old in this town. Um, civil liberties matter, and this bill wasn't good enough. FISA 702 allows for the warrantless surveillance of foreign persons, but those wanting reforms say it's been used to target political opponents. On Capitol Hill, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. Former President Trump posted on True Social, kill the FISA program, claiming it was illegally used against him and many others spying on his 2016 campaign. But House Speaker Mike Johnson says they'll regroup and keep trying, saying it's too important for national security to let that FISA section expire. From FISA to FAFSA. A House Education Subcommittee discussed the botched rollout of FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Technical problems resulted in a delay in college students getting loads. Mark Kantrowitz, president of a company called Cerebly, was one of the witnesses. There are 2.8 million fewer FAFSAs filed this year as compared with the same time last year. The drop in college enrollment may be worse than during the pandemic, causing some colleges to close. He said a focus on student loan forgiveness programs may be in part to blame for the failures. But Education Secretary Miguel Cardona told a House Appropriations Subcommittee that's not true. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. On Wall Street, stock futures are falling before a wholesale inflation update this hour. The day after a sell-off reacted to consumer prices rising more than expected last month. The Masters, golf's first major tournament of the year, was supposed to tee off now at Augusta in Georgia. But bad weather has delayed the start, now set for 10.30 a.m. Eastern. I'm Dave Anthony, and this is Fox News.
Here's a look at local news. I'm Jim Miller. Communities across central Illinois donating used eclipse glasses to be enjoyed by other eclipse enthusiasts around the world. In Champaign, Greener Goods is encouraging people to drop off unwanted eclipse glasses at their location at 110 South Neal Street outside of Champaign-Urbana. Villas of Hollybrook Senior Living Communities accepting the glasses as donations. One central Illinois community mourning the death of a legendary high school football coach, former Muhammad Seymour head coach Frank Dutton died unexpectedly from a cardiac arrest. He holds the record for the most wins in school history. He took the Bulldogs to their first state championship game. The scheduled shutdown of the Rivian manufacturing plant in Normal's begun. Shutdown was scheduled to make technological upgrades at that facility. Shutdown began this past Saturday. It'll last until April 28. The company says it plans to produce some 57,000 electric vehicles this year, the same as last year. You're up to date from the Stevie J Broadcasting Newsroom. I'm Jim Miller. Well, that's kind of what we were thinking i i'm telling you so um when when you're forecast mm-hmm. i just think about what you he's accurate well he's darn accurate i, I mean i'm not guess i am blowing smoke because you're my guy yeah, but you, no you, i you, I, I, I mean that, that that that's what you're supposed, supposed to do with the well, business like I, think right <laughs> I, I don't know i mean i i listen to you because i know that you're going to be accurate so you said today rainy and windy and dang if it's not rainy and windy so there you go i planned on it I am a little cooler. Uh, good, 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 good. Are you are, are you planning for a fine, fine, or er, Earl Finkel? Finkel used to call it, uh, these weather phenomena as you go right in the other direction: the, the, the sun, the wind, the warmth, <laughs> and oxaborious weekend. Oxaborious, I it's remember. Not I love that. You can yeah. it. You the can people, Google it. the people in uh, oxaborious. I remember the, when he used that word. Well, I, uh, the people in Augusta, Georgia. Want to know what you think? Because they're, oh, they're that's di- a problem. No. That's a problem today, at least. <laughs> M- Masters right. today. I'm just wondering if they're going to go to you know one less round. If you're not, gonna, or maybe they do 27 tomorrow, 27 Saturday. So we took a peek. Six to 11 a.m. One and a half to two and a half rainfall and wind yep. gusts up to 45 mile an hour in Augusta, Georgia. So how can you play? Huh? I don't know. Yeah, well, mo- most of that, most of that right now, at least, has passed east now. Uh, but there's a, kind of a little secondary cold front. I, I think they've seen uh, the bulk of what they're going to get there today. However, as Diane just pointed out, uh, the uh, I'm trying to talk and walk and uh, chew gum and uh, get the right confusion <laughs> screen up here. Yeah, some of the radar estimates are in that inch to two inch category, and they were already had wet grounds, and it came down in a hurry uh, there on the overnight hours. So there may be some mop up, clean up, and uh, you know, I, I think they have a window, but how good the course is and playable is yeah. for the rest of the day is another question. Well, they also mm-hmm. you know. Well, this is the place that doesn't play golf in the summer. You, they don't want it torn up. They don't want a yeah. zillion, 50,000 people right. messing They're up. not even letting people in the parking lot until uh, like after well, 10 gotta, or 11. they got to dry it out. They don't want yeah, money, exactly. money, money, money. So they don't want people there and to deal with that congestion. They're just saying, stay away for now I until mean, this blows over. You, you can't even go to the St. Louis Cardinals Bush Stadium and step on the grass. When, when We were down there once for a... You know, affiliate picture, and you had to stay along the wall. Yeah. Don't touch the yeah. ground. I mean, yeah. this is yeah. the Masters. The exactly. Masters. Exactly. So I, I wonder how they'll handle it. I wonder if they'll get anything in today. But it's a, well, the, the, the best uh, is the Masters. I love it. I would, th- I would think they, they, if they play their cr- cards right, and again, I'm not familiar with, uh, with, with, with golf course layouts, and let alone that. If they, you know, and it's already wet to begin with. However, if they did have some decent, you know, if they have a good runoff and yeah, draining right. aspect to it, you might be able to get, you know, 18 in maybe today, mm. 9, 18. I don't know if that's possible or even worth it. Uh, but again, better weather, you know, as the weekend uh, and, and Friday progress. But uh, I think the bulk of which is over with. The big stuff is over with now. But yeah, one to two inches, no problem there from the well, overnight And hours, so. uh, really, tomorrow night and Saturday night is the Illini 100 in Farmer City Race. Way and they've canceled their um, uh, practice today. But tomorrow, then, but Saturday. they're good to go. And Friday and Saturday looks gorgeous, yeah, right, a, Greg? Yeah, 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 no Oxa, problems at all. Maybe Oxaborious or something. Our, our weather <laughs> brought to you this morning by Carl. How do you spell that? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Carl says, monitor your skin regularly and talk with your doctor. If you notice any changes, for more information, go to carl.org slash skin cancer. All right, so get through today. We're going to like it, huh? 
Yeah, what does we get through this stuff today? And, you know, may not necessarily like to uh, next week. Now, it's going to fair about the week is warm, almost summery around here. But we're trying to get this transition here. Longer range is running maybe about five to seven days, a little bit behind schedule. But later next week and beyond, we do move into cooler air. But it is the start of a drier weather pattern across the area for folks trying to get things ready to go on uh, field work and planting uh, 2024. But, yeah, kind of a windswept, chilly day's worth of weather. At least we don't have the rainfall totals that they've seen down uh, across the deep south and southeastern part of the country. Johnny's place, boy, there in New Orleans took a hit yesterday. Uh -oh. There's too much yeah, too much water down there. And, and, and just this time last year, even last uh, winter, uh, it was a dryness and drought issue down there. In any event, a little bit of rain and some spotty shower activity here across East Central Illinois. Nothing of significance. 52 at Willen Savoy. We'll struggle to about 55. That's all I think we can do today uh, with that gusty north wind and some in and out on and off rain for uh, the day today. That'll wind down before midnight tonight, 45. Tomorrow, wind stays up, but that's a drier wind with a partly sunny sky and 60. Turns breezy, milder, warmer, drier Saturday with a high of the 71. 78 Saturday will be around 80. Monday and Tuesday could be a fleeting shower, thunderstorm, and then some organized rains on a cold front for the middle part of next week. For Stevie J Broadcasting, I'm your host, Greg Solgang. All right, thank you, Greg. Appreciate it very much. 7-Eleven, what's going on with the Champagne School Board? I know. Holy moly. So they did have a surge of people interested in stepping in, Well, right? then they tried to interview them, and that broke up. Right. They didn't even have a chance to interview them. So the regional superintendent standing by to okay. my view, it's, it is a, it's a dumpster wow. fire. Wow. Ten candidates invited to interview for two openings on the Champaign School Board got a glimpse Wednesday into how the process might have played out had it not been canceled in the 11th hour. I think they had a seven-hour meeting. And then they walked out. That's right. You had a uh, Amy Armstrong mm -hmm. and um, uh, Betsy Holder. Betsy Holder on one side, the others on. There's only three others, so there's three against two right now. Right, because in March there were two yeah. that uh, resigned. There were 26 applicants. They narrowed it down to 10, so at least there are people. Mm -hmm. uh, Board President Jonna Baker told the News Gazette Wednesday night she believed it was important for the 10 to get a chance for us to hear where they stood on issues. Uh, didn't didn't happen. It was called off for lack of a quorum. You have to have a certain number of people. Sure. They didn't go to Facebook to air their grievances to circumvent the process. They came and were willing to be part of the agreed upon process. I can respect that. I'd also hope their board members would. Well, anyway, it's uh, Mark Thies was out here when he ran, mm -hmm. and then he got off. Mm -hmm. But it'd be nice to know what the heck. <laughs> this is our Champagne School Board. And I, I would deem it important to certainly be able to have a meeting, but there are some divides, and I don't know how, how that all gets figured out. But anyway, that's that's news uh, this morning locally. Champaign County Unit School District Number 4, it covers over 10,000 students and 19 campuses covering Champaign and the villages of Bonville and Savoy. So... Um, that that, um, that is this the This quick search says crisis in the classroom. So, I, yeah, that's something you need to look at if if you're involved and, and want to get more information. I, I I guess you just go to champagneschools.org. Yeah, well, the News Gazette's got a front page thing okay. on Okay. They also have, the Gazette has the uh, Cunningham Children's Home quilt pictured. I thought that was kind of cool. Nice. Okay, so the, we've talked about Champaign Cunningham Children's Home Big Quilt Sale coming up. Yes, yep. that's coming up this weekend yep. on the yep. 12th and 13th. And uh, both collaborating with the Boneyard Arts Festival with over 40 locations that you can visit. And, and that's going to be fun this weekend. Hey, Aaron Ammon's going to be on today. Okay. Uh, that's at 820. Okay. And we will uh, ask him, I think what we really need are election judges. Pays 200 bucks. if you want that. Maybe some pizza. Okay. Um, but we need more election judges. Republicans are really lagging on on getting that going. You got like a four hour training, and then um, and then you can be an election judge. I think part of the thing, and I'll ask him this: is it, you know, their people in Philo, which did not have a primary here. I don't know the last time Philo didn't have a place to vote uh, because I guess no election judges. And so if somebody in Philo wants to say, I'll be election judge, but I want to serve in Philo. I don't think you can pick that. I see. He, he puts you where he wants you to and, be and where he needs you. Yeah. Yeah. But if you rallied in every town, wouldn't you get some townspeople to do it? And you know, 
why not? I right. Don't, I don't know. And, anyway. then you, and then you know people when they're approaching. Well, yeah. And, and, and it's, I it's, like people saying, hey, Diane, how's it going? And, 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 and you know, it's a four-hour training, but you understand the process is you do this with this, you do this with this, and this is how you print the ballot, this is how you do we it. We need it to be fair and yeah, balanced. No, yeah, and so you have a you're generally Republican, Democratic mm-hmm. representative. So, all right, we'll talk about uh, that at 820 with Aaron Ammons. Uh, it is a quarter after. We check sports headlines. Well, we talked about the 88 Masters and their rain delay at least uh, for a little while with the showers and wind uh, calling for an inch and a half to two and a half inches with gusts about 45 mile an hour through 11 a.m. I think that's eastern time isn't it? Uh, That's Georgia. Georgia's eastern. Mm, Okay so um, 910 was supposed to be this ceremonial tee shot with Jack Nicholas and Gary Player and Tom Watson Mm. all combining for I think it said 11 uh, green jackets yeah, that were handed like that. out. Jack, so. Jack had six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and speaking of awards, the John Wooden Award for the second time was Zach Ed and Caitlin Clark won it on Tuesday, honored last night in Iowa and retiring her number twenty-two jersey. Makes sense. Yep. Yep. So, uh, all the local favorite teams ended up losing yesterday, including Philadelphia over St. Louis four to three. Here's your Redbird recap. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney. The Cardinals yesterday, in a light rain throughout the game, finished up their homestand. They won three, they lost three, and lost to the Phillies yesterday, 4-3. It was a close game. They lost 4-3, to three, as you mentioned, and they had their chances at the end. The Cardinals had a runner on in the ninth inning, a rough day for Victor Scott. He made an error. In fact, the Cardinals made two errors in the game, very unusual for them, and they just couldn't come up with enough runs late. Andre Palante suffered the loss. In the inning where the Cardinals made it a one-run game, Victor Scott led off with an infield hit. He broke a long offer, but he took a step towards second and was tagged out, just compounding the problems from the first inning error. A rough day for the rookie, Vic, and he did that offensively and defensively, obviously, but a nice day for Zach Thompson, who ended up with six strikeouts out of the pen. He limited the damage that uh, Palante had caused and kept the Cardinals in the game. The Phillies won at 4-3, to three, and the Cardinals are traveling today to Arizona. In Phoenix tomorrow night, Stephen Matz will pitch, and we're on the air at 745 Central. The Cardinals Hall of Fame and Museum is the official home of Cardinals history. For those who want to be a part of one of the sport's greatest collections in the world, museum membership is the way to go. Cardinals Museum membership provides unlimited admission for one year, exclusive Hall of Fame bobbleheads, discounts, ticket offers, and more, in addition to supporting exhibit design and artifact restoration. There are a variety of membership levels, including our ultimate level of membership. For more info and to join, go to cardinals.com slash membership. San Diego over the Cubs 10 to two they'll be in seattle tomorrow and that's an 8 40 start over on us 1059 cleveland over the chicago white Sox seven to six and in 10 innings so they'll face cincinnati on friday at 6 40 on the chicago white Sox south side but uh jacob herdebees is not on the cincinnati roster but triple a yep, right yep triple a and he has a banged up shoulder that Dang. he's rehabbing but i mm-hmm. think it's going really really well so yeah we're i'm following the reds about as much as i'm following the Cardinals and the Cubs, so okay, it makes sense. That's right. You got a son-in-law. Uh, I know it. You got to follow the team. The SIU over <laughs> Illinois softball. That final was six to one. They've got Purdue at Eichelberger Field tomorrow at five. Our weather this morning brought to you by Busey for over 150 years. Busey member FDIC. It's Thursday. That means John Decker. That's is right. Up at the bottom of the hour. <laughs> it is 719. Hello again, everyone. Let's check weather for Central Illinois. Champagne and Panama Saturday. Chilly raw days worth of weather on tap for the day today with the weather system over the lower Wabash making its move to the north and northeast. We'll get into the wraparound drier side of it for the day tomorrow. Quickly moving back in milder to warmer Pacific and Gulf air and temperatures will do just that over the course of the weekend. More rain in scattered fashion next week. Periods of rain for the day today and isolated thunderstorm highs nearing 55 with that northeast to north wind increasing 20 to 30 and gusty. Windy tonight. Occasional showers ending by midnight. Low down to 45 with a northwest to west wind. 15 to 25 and gusty tomorrow, partly sunny, windy, the high around 60, the west northwesterly wind 20 to 30 and gusty. Diminishing winds later tomorrow night, clear in 43. For the weekend, turning breezy and mild or Saturday afternoon with sunshine 71, 78 on Sunday. Could be a couple of showers and thunderstorms breaking out Monday, more likely Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Highs Monday and Tuesday up at around 80 degrees. For Stevie J Broadcasting, I'm Peter Greg Solgay. A tradition of excellence over 150 years in the making. 
At Busey Bank, we're committed to building relationships that span generations. Wherever your journey in life leads you, we are with you along the way, creating a legacy for you and your family. Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868, proud to be the official bank of the Fighting Illini. Member FDIC. I'm Liz Clayman, and this is the Fox Business Report. Online used car dealer CarMax says it was selling more cars but made less in the recent quarter because car prices declined. Higher interest rates and tighter lending standards have impacted sales. President and CEO Bill Nash says CarMax has been making it easier for car buyers by enhancing automation and using artificial intelligence. CarMax shares are down 11%. Amazon CEO Andy Jassy says generative AI could be the largest technological transformation since the Internet. In Jassy's annual letter to shareholders, he says AI is the next pillar of growth for the company following Marketplace Prime and Amazon Web Services. Wall Street will be reacting today to the producer price index for March. Inflation at the wholesale level. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Kosova. Invested in you. Stay on top of the latest forecast with America's weather team in the palm of your hands. Here's the latest from America's Weather Center. It's Fox weather updates throughout your busy day, every day. That heat's going to be out there for one more day. Temperatures being 30 degrees above average. Put the power of over 100 meteorologists and the worldwide resources of Fox in your hands with the Fox Weather Podcast. Precise, personal, powerful. Subscribe and listen now at foxnewspodcasts.com. Yeah, so we're excited about about this. Hey, baseball fans, get ready to swing for the fences with the St. Louis Cardinals live on ESPN 93.5. Catch every pitch, every hit, and every heart-stopping moment as the Cardinals light up the diamond. Don't miss a single inning of the action. Tune in to ESPN 93.5 and experience the thrill of America's favorite pastime with the St. Louis Cardinals. It's going to be a heck of a season. Brought to you by Pia's, Max Twin City Recycling, and by Route 66 Solar. Grab your peanuts and Cracker Jacks and get ready to cheer on the Cardinals. Let's play ball. Yep. we got to cheer on the Cardinals in person, June 22nd. We are excited about the bus trip. And uh, we, you know, we, what, we, what we did is we went out and told the people that went last year, kind of first ride of refusal thing. And so the bus, which is, you know, a Saturday reserved parking for our big Timmy Tours bus, which are really nice. Yeah. And then we walk in, which is, I don't know how many feet it is, but it's less than 200 feet away. Right. And then we walk in to the ride up the ramp, and we're there. Uh-huh. It's not a lot of walking, so if that's a concern. But if you are interested in joining us, we have 16 seats left. That's, that's awesome. It. We haven't hardly pushed it at all. No, it, this it, is it's a just Saturday, fun, yeah. and we usually do weekday, so I think that's what's freed people up a little more. Maybe so, but it's a, it's a pricey ticket because that's our life right now. Mm-hmm. When butter is seven fifty nine for four sticks, mm. I still lament about Dang that. It. It's expensive, but it is all-inclusive. That means you're going to our private suite. All the food and beverages are covered. No reaching in your pocket, unless you want to tip your bus captain, Diane Ducey. So <laughs> I mean, I'm going to pass it to the driver, <laughs> but all good. And it's June I'll give 22nd. You, I'll give you money for the driver. Okay, tip, good. So Thank we'll you get for that. that. Covered. And then uh, it's a 115 start against the San Francisco yep. Giants. And I feel like uh, we were talking about the promotions with uh, Stan Musial Tumblr being handed out. That yes, day too. A, that was a real coup because <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, they kept a really good day for that. It's a San Francisco Giants and the Cardinals and a Stan Musial Tumblr giveaway. So and we got to make they're sure. making a play on the stanley is the type of tumbler ah. so they're doing Ooh. that sort of thing so stanley are really I good know. so that's I a know. massively quality I mean, item on opening day last week you were talking with the person yeah. in charge of promotions and how good quality they are yeah. so stanley man that's a great one to get so that's a extra extra incentive exactly so if you are interested in the bus trip simply text to the fisher national bank text line it's 217-359-2255 uh, just text in bus. We'll rush out details, and then you can make a decision. But again, 16 seats is uh, approximately what I've got left. Um, but yeah, lots of people are already in. They've already paid. So it's June 22, 
9 a.m. from First Christian Church at Staley and Curtis. Thank you for them letting us use their parking lot. Yeah. And we'll have the, the big green bus there from Timmy Tours and uh, take the road. I love it. It's right on 57. Yep. You just Quick trip down. Right yep. on there, right yep. off of Staley and Curtis Road. Uh, speaking of winning and, and getting in, uh, you know, texting in, uh, Terry and, and Ken and Steve and Tom uh, checking out Kansas tomorrow. So that should be fun. And people were texting in for the Disney on Ice. It's happening at Grossinger Motors Arena uh, this weekend. So, and, you know, we had a great success with that. AJ Croce, Croce Plays Croce Show. So I'm loving the experiences people are getting when they listen in here. For, for Kansas, I'd probably be very comfortable sitting next to Roger Ebert. Because <laughs> it's too darn loud. Maybe. <laughs> but then again, everybody there, I would think, we're going to be generational. I'm telling you, Guitar Hero changed everything. That's right. It illuminated... Um, and when we were visiting with Ronnie Platt, the lead singer, yeah, he was talking about what a boost that was and how difficult it was for him to succeed on guitar. He, 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 some of those. he He's lead singer now. <laughs> yeah, he said, I played the guitar on, on the Kansas Carry On. I, I did horribly. Exactly. But, but he said, I don't want to say our Kansas audience is getting older, but our Kansas audience is getting older. Yeah. So I, I mean, if you are really into those songs outside of Guitar Hero and the younger generation picking up on it, you got to be 60s. But people know Carry On My Wayward Son and Dust in the Wind. Dust in the Wind. Uh -huh. Reason other, to Believe. Re, uh, whatever. Uh, the, so. Yeah. See, can't even remember. <laughs> So people will go and you know forget everything. And, yeah. All right. Coming up, it's John Decker, our White House correspondent, national correspondent for Gray Television. I wish Gray was in this market. They're a very good operation, and John's their top guy. And on all their stations, 130 mm -hmm. stations or mm -hmm. something. But he uh, he does a great job, and I constantly get fed pictures. He was right at the Rose Garden yesterday. Where the Japanese are yep. two days ago. Whatever. Oh, that'd be pretty. I mean, it's just historic. I just and he just claims he never gets tired of being front row of seeing history every day. Yeah. But uh, and he has to yell out his question. And right. Sometimes. And he has the stuff. No, he does. He does really well, and he's very, very good at what he does. He's very middle of the road from the standpoint. That's what a journalist should do. You mm -hmm. you you pound Democrats. You pound Republicans. You pound. What I mean, you get after them and get the answers we all want and need. That's what we want out of journalism. We got our own opinion, but we wouldn't mind people that are covering the news to do it equitably. Um, and a lot of times it's not up to the reporters, up to the assignment editors and news directors and, and brass that say that's not what we're going to cover. And you see that very clearly now in, in the network you watch. All right, we'll break. We'll be back. ESPN 93.5. It is 728, and John Decker will be coming up next. Bet like the pros with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circus Sports is now available in Illinois. Hi, I'm Derek Stevens. I've been a lifelong sports better, and I'm the owner of Circus Sports. We're excited that the Circus Sports app is now ready for action. Experience big app bets with high betting limits, tight money line splits, and more. Now you can download, fund, and bet like a pro from anywhere in Illinois. Download your new bookie today at CircusSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. Coming Saturday, June 22nd, it's the Cardinal Bus Trip, brought to you by Route 66 Solar. Yes, join us for a beautiful day in St. Louis as we take on the San Francisco Giants. For information about our suite and all the beverages and food that are included and a wonderful motor coach from Timmy Tours, simply text in BUS to 217-359-2255. Join us Saturday, June 22nd for the annual Cardinal Bus Trip from ESPN 93.5. So when was the last time you saw a best deal guarantee? You mean a promise that actually held up? Right. That some unknown online entity didn't want you to log in and download a code and then re-verify as you join some club? Drives you nuts, I know. And then once you purchase that set of steak knives? Well, Dick Van Dyke Appliance World is a lot simpler. You find a verified great deal and they beat it. Just show them the deal you saw. A newspaper clipping or the online cart price will do, and then you're good. At Dick Van Dyke Appliance World, it's one of those instances where you see a best deal guarantee and... You get the best deal. This is Dennis Rekin, chairman of Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. Our exclusive 10-year protection plan comes free with most appliance purchases. Whether it's a GE, Whirlpool, Frigidaire, Bosch, or any of our 30 brands, I guarantee we will beat any competitor's deal. 
Wow! It seems like the cost of everything is on the rise. But Erie Insurance can help make sure your auto insurance premium isn't one of them. Avoid rate increases with Erie Rate Lock. Even if you have a claim, your rates won't go up until you change your car, driver, or address. Your Erie agent in Champaign is Thomas & Eller's Insurance. Erie Rate Lock is not available in all states. Other conditions and limitations at erieinsurance.com. I'm Liz Klayman. erieinsurance.com for company licensure and product details. Tabman's Towing team of experienced tow professionals is seeking others with CDLs, previous tow experience, and or strong interest in serving others. Please visit our career page at tabmanstowing.com. Yeah, Greg Solier says uh, kind of windy and rainy, but after that, it's going to be really nice. Yeah. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, thumbs up. All right. Uh, John Decker is standing by. He's next. ESPN 93.5. It is 7.30. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. President Biden meets with Japan's Prime Minister Kishida Fumio and Philippines President Fernando, uh, Fernando Marcos Jr. today at the White House. Prime Minister Fumio addresses Congress this morning. He was hosted at a state dinner by the President and First Lady last night. Join me in raising your glasses to our alliance, to our friendship. Today's summit is meant to project unity against threats from China. There's storm damage from Texas to Florida and more rough weather in the forecast today. After a destructive day of flooding, hurricane force winds and tornadoes over the Gulf Coast states, expect to see the risk of large hail, very strong winds, heavy rain and isolated tornadoes for the southeast, the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic. The northeast will be impacted Friday and Saturday with more flooding concerns, high winds and severe weather. Fox meteorologist Janice Dean, weather's delayed the start of the Masters Golf Tournament in Augusta, Georgia until 10. 30 a.m. America's listening to Fox News. Here's a look at local news. Cities across Illinois say the governor's plan to do away with the state's grocery tax would be a blow to their budgets. They say the current 1% sales tax makes up a significant part of their finances. The governor says the elimination of the tax would help Illinois families who've been hit hard by increasing prices. Illinois Senate's passed a couple of bills. It says it'll cut down on teen vaping. One of the bills would ban companies from selling vaping products that are made to look like everyday household items. The second bill would block people from shipping them in Illinois except to retail and distributors. It's already against the law in the state to sell vaping products to anyone under the age of 21. Scheduled shutdown of the Rivian manufacturing plant in Normals begun. The shutdown scheduled to make technological upgrades at that facility. Shutdown began this past Saturday. It'll last until April the 28th. The company says it plans to produce some 57,000 electric vehicles this year, the same as last year. You're up to date from the Stevie J Broadcasting Newsroom. I'm Jim Miller. Our weather brought to you by the Urbana Park District. And they have uh, the office trivia tomorrow at the Phillips Recreation Center. That's from the TV show. A lot of fun after six. And, of course, they're supporting the Boneyard Arts Festival with three different locations as you enjoy that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Learn more at urbanaparks.org. Hello again, everyone. Let's check weather for you. Central Illinois, Champagne event this Saturday at Ron. Chilly days worth of weather on tap for the day today with the weather system up the Wabash and heading into the northern and eastern Great Lakes region. That'll mean gusty winds for the next couple of days, but a quick turnaround back into mild Pacific air. Matter of fact, a big warm up slated around here through much of next week. Only to 55 today with periods of rain, maybe an isolated thunderstorm. That northeast to north wind steadily increases 20 to 30 and gusty could hit 40 miles per hour later this afternoon for a time tonight. Showers will end before midnight, low down to 45. Tomorrow, partly sunny, windy, the high around 60 and West northwesterly wind 20 to 30 and gusty. Clearing 43 for tomorrow night for the weekend. Breezy and milder with sun-filled skies for Saturday afternoon. Winds turn back to the south behind about 71. 78, a windy, warmer, dry Sunday. Monday could be a stray shower at 81. Then highs near 80 Tuesday. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms. More rain ahead Wednesday and Thursday. Next week, daytime temperatures, though, still well into the 70s. For CVJ Broadcasting, I'm your Greg Soldier. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, it's Thursday. John Decker. John Decker. John Decker. I want to talk to John Decker. He is the one we know. I want to talk to John Decker. He's at the White House in press room. John Decker. John Decker. I want to talk to John Yes, children on combines now sing the theme. 
Kindergartners are letting, listing this as their favorite song. <laughs> exactly. And the teacher marked it wrong. I know. Okay. She didn't know what John That's, Decker's song was. Yeah, come on, Little man. Red Mark got a picture on, of man. that. Come on, man. <laughs> it's uh, our friend John Decker who is, um, I just can't imagine, a week in your life of all the things you see and do, mm-hmm. and then it's just another week. And I just said... But he doesn't really ever take it for granted. I think that's true. How is that? How is he just a, hey, there's the Prime Minister of Japan and President whatever? <laughs> yeah. Look, you know, you know, I, I, I don't take it for granted. I, I never get jaded. I think that's what uh, makes me excited about still doing something that I've been doing since 1995, wow. covering the White House. <laughs> Since Bill Clinton's first term, it never gets old to me. Traveling with the president uh, in a motorcade on Air Force One, being in the Oval Office, all still so cool to me. And you still wear the whole suit tie thing. It's all out of respect for the thing, right? I mean, it's it's oh, just of course. you don't see anybody in like, these days. You can go to Walmart and see people in jammies. I mean, they're in jammies. Yeah. yeah. And, but John's not in his jammies on Air Force One. He doesn't do that. No, no, no. Now, one time. Uh, you know, it was because we were going to um, we were going to Puerto Rico in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. This was with uh, President Trump, and I wore clothing that you'd wear if you were going to a disaster area. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. As that opposed makes sense. to wearing a yeah. suit and a tie. Makes sense. So that that made more sense. You but dr- uh, generally, yeah, suit and tie every day. Yep. Absolutely. You dress for whatever you're doing. That's fine. Right. All right. So, yeah. what is the latest on the Donald Trump um, courthouse visits? What's going on? Latest uh, this coming Monday is when he will be in a criminal courtroom in Manhattan. That's the start of that uh, hush money case uh, that was brought by the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. That will get underway. The trial expected to last anywhere from four to six weeks. Every day that trial is going on because Donald Trump is a criminal defendant. He must be in that courtroom. So four out of five days a week, uh, he will be in that courtroom. That will keep him off the campaign trail. Uh, That will prevent him from having campaign rallies or fundraising. So, uh, you know, look, it's it's an impact. There's no doubt about that. But I think the the fairly knowledgeable observer would say, is he going to get a fair swing at it in Manhattan? Just if I were to say the change of venue is in Mississippi or New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, right. I mean, you'd probably say, well, they're going to not they're not going to do it. It's the same thing. Can he find you know twelve impartial jurors? Yeah. Well, that's that's the key. And so Monday is the process of choosing a jury. Uh, there are certain questions as part of what's known as the voir dire process in terms of choosing jurors that will be permitted to be asked of uh, those potential jurors. And, you know, there are questions that they cannot ask uh, potential jurors. Uh, so uh, I think what you're focused on is getting an impartial juror. Uh, are you familiar with Donald Trump? Absolutely. Everybody's going to be familiar with Donald Trump. Uh, but can you put aside your feelings regarding Donald Trump to just look at the evidence that's presented to you and adjudicate this particular case fairly uh, and impartially? That is what you are aiming for if you are the lawyer representing Donald Trump or you're the lawyer representing, uh, you know, the prosecutor in this case, uh, representing the Manhattan DA's office. Okay, this is Stormy Daniels? Is that what this is? Yes, all the way it back is. To Storm- yes. Okay. Man. Goes all the way back. Think about that. Goes all the way back to 2016, uh, weeks before the 2016 presidential election. So this goes back quite some time. Uh, and uh, this is the first criminal case that Donald Trump is contending with. There may be others. You know, it really depends upon what happens. Uh, Stevie, two weeks from today, I will be in the Supreme Court for a very important case as it relates to Donald Trump, uh, his claim that he is absolute immune, absolute immunity from criminal prosecution, that issue will be argued before the Supreme Court uh, two weeks from today. I hope it's carried on radio like it was last time, because I found it fascinating. Yeah, it will be, yes. Mm. Uh, You'll have a live stream of the audio. I'll be in the courtroom, uh, so that's always, for me, just amazing to be in the courtroom. Uh, and I was in the courtroom, I think I've mentioned this to you before, for Bush v. Gore. Uh, that mm. essentially decided our 
election in the year 2000. So this is another very important case, monumental case, uh, you know, impacting, uh, I think, in a very real way, the 2024 presidential election. Well, what if they say he does have immunity? What would that mean? It would mean that the case in Washington, D.C., for certain, that case regarding election interference goes away. Case is done. Case is dismissed. Now, Donald Trump has lost at both the trial court level and at the appellate court level, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, and we'll see what the Supreme Court decides to do, whether it upholds uh, that unanimous decision by the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals or uh, whether there are, you know, at least five justices that overturn that ruling. Uh, that is why it's so important in terms of what happens in that case. We will likely have a decision by the Supreme Court by the end of June. Okay, so it's still going to take a while after the arguments. It will, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, again, could, look. Go ahead. I was going to. I was going to say, Stevie, we could get a ruling or decision by the Supreme Court uh, before June, mm. but it's going to come as late as the end of June. Gotcha. Okay. It's John Decker, who is the only attorney on press row and the only guy that could argue in front of the Supreme Court forever, I mean, as far as a press a journalist guy, right? I mean, nobody's ever had that, right? No. I, I, I'm. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, I am uh, out there on an island uh, by myself in terms of being the only lawyer in the White House press corps, but also the only member of the Supreme Court bar. So as you point out, I could, uh, um, you know, I could argue a case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Donald Trump did not ask me uh, <laughs> if I wanted to represent him in terms of this case before the Supreme Court. That would be You something. actually could. Uh, you, I mean, you have that, you that level. I could actually yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah, uh, pr pretty, that. pretty haughty stuff. And when you say I'll be in there, how do you know for sure? Because the line's big just because of your status? I have a seat reserved for me, a media seat reserved for me. Uh, I receive word uh, from the public information officer of the Supreme Court uh, about, I would say, a week to 10 days ago. So I know that well, I will be in the Supreme Court watching this case. But you don't have two seats, right? You just have one. <laughs> Why would I have two seats? Well, because no, it'd be like, take, take your grandpa to work day, bud. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, I see. Come there on, you man. Go. What are you thinking? CDJ. Remember the Air yeah. Force One thing? I thought we had a plan. I thought <laughs> well, we, no, we go. No, Come on. Hey, we, we have a plan for that. I didn't realize the plan carried over Heck to yeah. the Supreme Court hey, at hey. Donald J. Trump versus the United States. Hey, Clarence, <laughs> Clarence, Clarence. Clarence, what are you doing after this? Want to hang? Hey, John, <laughs> Robert, get a coffee? <laughs> yeah, I want to hang. Can I get your? Can I get your number? Hey, yeah, um, yeah of he, course. He wouldn't want me in there. Okay, it's John right. Decker, Great Television's White House correspondent on the Tabman's Toy and Phone Line. So, what's the latest? Uh, Donald Trump said abortion should be dis decided in the states. Arizona right. Supreme Court ruled something from 1860. Give me the latest on Arizona's air abortion situation. Yeah, so there's a law on the books in the state of Arizona uh, all the way from 1864, pre-Civil War, uh, and it makes getting an abortion a felony in that state. And so what happened was in 1973 with Roe v. Wade, that law on the books essentially became a zombie law. It was not enforced because the Supreme Court uh, rule uh, is the law of the land, uh, so it... it uh, had precedence, had trumped the law on the books in the state of Arizona. But when Roe versus Wade was overturned two years ago with the Dobbs decision, that law, that zombie law, came back to life. And so that, right now, as things stand today, is the law in the state of Arizona, unless two things happen. The state legislature uh, passes a law uh, which would allow for abortions in the state of Arizona, or it's going to be on the ballot in November. So voters could also decide this issue. But uh, as things stand today, this is the, the law in the state of Arizona, and uh, the attorney general for Arizona has indicated that she will not enforce this particular law. Uh, but Donald Trump this week has been speaking a whole lot about the issue of abortion. I think he recognizes this is not a winning issue for Republicans. And he saw what happened in 2022 uh, with the energetic or energized uh, Democratic voters in particular. That's the reason why they held on to the Senate, the reason why there wasn't a red wave in the House, and he's concerned about that happening again in 2024. Okay, and then to Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, 
this is getting to be an eye roller. I mean, when, when, <laughs> yeah, McCor- right. when McCarthy went to what is it, 15 votes? There's no yeah. way he should have given power to one, right? To, this <laughs> right. is just this is out yeah. of hand. One one person can object to the speaker, right? Well, that's right. One person can do that. But all that I've seen so far, and correct me if I'm wrong, I've only seen one Republican House member, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, threatening to oust. Speaker Johnson, she's out there all by herself in that. Now, if others, you know, join her, follow her lead, that's another story entirely. But there, to your point about there, there being an eye rolling going on as it relates to the House, I don't think House Republicans want to oust Mike Johnson because they'll have a ter- terrible narrative in terms of running for re-election of a dysfunctional uh, House Republican conference running the House of Representatives. That's not a good narrative to run on. Uh, and so for, for that reason and others, I think he's safe in terms of his speakership. Well, good, because I would question their competency. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> enough yeah. enough of this. This is crazy. And so I'm glad yeah. to hear well, that. She, they wouldn't have the votes if it just Marjorie Taylor Greene. There's not enough votes. Just yet. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah She'd yeah. just be out there. It would be, uh, what, like 217 to, uh, you know, she would join, I guess, with Democrats and opposing. But that's not enough. You know? So. Uh, as things stand today, I think he's safe in his speakership, and uh, uh, we'll see. You know, Marjorie Taylor Greene is very vocal. Uh, there's no doubt about it. She gets a lot of attention. Uh, but, you know, the people that were responsible for actually ousting Kevin McCarthy have not joined with Marjorie Taylor Greene to say, hey, let's also get rid of Mike Johnson. Uh, they they have been quiet, like Mike, like mm-hmm. Matt Gates, uh, He says, I'm supportive of uh, Mike Johnson, okay. uh, you know, right. he, he and the others that uh, were working to and, and were successful in ousting Kevin McCarthy have not jumped on board the Marjorie Taylor Green bandwagon. John Decker, um, last thing. Yes, sir. Among all of you, and I really loosely, I call you a journalist, <laughs> but the others, yeah. you know, a lot of them that I'm going, okay. Right. But I, I editorial. Is, is, there no, is there no buzz? About the status of the president's health. I mean, I, I watch some of this stuff and I'm going, this is, sometimes I'm thinking, they're not serious, right? He, he, they're not thinking four more years when he'll be 86 years old. The guy, it just isn't very good. And, and I'm trying to be kind, empathetic to, to yeah. aging. Yeah. But this is the sure. president of the United States. And it just right. doesn't look like he's up to this job now, let alone four years from now. I mean, did the press, I know the press in certain networks aren't going to ever bring this stuff up and illuminate it but goodness gracious it's like you're kidding i can't believe that's why i'll stand by it won't be joe biden it'll be somebody else <laughs> okay i like that i like that you're standing by that choice uh i i you know you and i disagree on this i think it's a biden trump rematch in november uh but uh, to your point he is 81 years old uh let's not forget uh, donald trump is going to be 78 years old in june so these are not young people uh, but, you know, with uh, Joe Biden, I see it every day, uh, you know, physically, you know, the way he walks, shuffling his feet, so to speak, uh, you know, it sh- he shows that part of his age physically. Mentally, I think he's there. Uh, I will tell you that because I see him every day. I see how he answers questions. Uh, but, uh, look, he is he has the walk of someone who um, is is not, mm, you know, what, as as physically able as as others. Uh, one person's 81 isn't another person's 81. That's for sure. Oh, no Mick question. Jagger. How, yeah. Look it up. Hey, Diane, look it up right now. How old's Mick Jagger? Please Google okay. Google that. Okay. Yeah. Bet. yeah. He's, Tell me. He's way up there. But no, I, I saw a race in My some comp- reaction is 80. But. I think he's 80 ish. Mm-hmm. But I saw a race. I think he's 80. I, saw, I think he's 80. I saw yeah. a competitive race, a 100 yard meter, 100 meter run yeah. of 85. Yeah. 85 he's 80. 80. <laughs> 85 80, plus year old, 85 plus year olds doing yeah. sprints. 85 plus, you're right. Yeah. Age, age is different. Age mm-hmm. is different. But for Joe, different. but for Joe yeah. Biden walking yesterday, I was worried about his next yeah. step because it looked like he might fall. Right. I mean, that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And so when he's doing questions and answers, it's all scripted, right? It's unbelievable. I don't believe he. Well, no. The well for for the press conference that we saw yesterday, uh, it's not all scripted. You know, to me, I've said this to someone who got a question yesterday. Um, who was called upon yesterday, and she expressed the view to me that she was disappointed that uh, for the question that she asked, he relied on his notes and seemed to be reading. And I said to her, if, if I get fortunate enough to cho- to be chosen uh, to ask a question about uh, to to the president, 
I'm not going to ask a question that would allow him to rely on those. I'm it. going to ask a question you. that would be not off the beaten path, but certainly a question in the news, but something that the White House uh, press office that prepares him for these press conferences would not prep him on. Okay. So I know what my question would have been yesterday if I got called on, and um, it would have not been something that he could easily have relied on notes for. I'll tell you the question if I have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The question, the question actually has to do with what's going to happen in the Supreme Court two weeks from today. Donald Trump, his lawyers argue that he has absolute immunity from criminal prosecution. And my question to the current president is, do you agree with that legal theory that a president has absolute immunity from criminal prosecution. If you don't, why don't you agree with it? And what's your message to future presidents if that particular power, if you want to call it that, goes away, that they don't have absolute immunity? To me, that's a good question, and he'd be, he'd be having to for that particular question, Stevie, you'd have to think yeah. on his feet, which but, is uh, something I, I think is important. That wasn't in the notes. <laughs> so I, I guess no, I, I should have right? said scripted, but he does read his notes with, with whatever was prepared. So he, does. he has the answers for the big things, but then he also has a list of who he's calling on, doesn't he? He does. But that is not unusual. Okay. I mean, look, I've been covering the White House uh, going back to 95, and you know, I can tell you, uh, all the presidents, maybe with the exception of Bill Clinton, had this note card thing. You know, they'd look to the note card. Let's see who's on my note yep, card. Let's yep. see who, you know, was show. And yesterday, it was, as it relates to the White House press corps, two reporters from the wire services, one from Bloomberg, one from AFP. Uh, and, you know, it could, be, it could be someone, you know, it could be me next time. But in any case, that is what happens. And you know, but here's something I will tell you. If you are going to get called upon... Uh, having been called upon at one of those formal uh, joint press conferences before, you know going into the press conference you're going to get called upon because the White House essentially gives you a heads up. They phone you go, hope you're prepared. You know, that's okay, all good. it. You know, that, yeah. that's, okay, good. Yeah, so uh, well, they that, need to call on John Decker every doggone time. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> We just well, because like you got a seat at the Supreme Court, right. you ought to get a seat at <laughs> question at every darn press conference. Come on, man! Yeah, there you go. All right, John, yeah, we on, appreciate. Man. Come on, man! <laughs> Listen, uh, keep up your good work for great television, John Decker. We appreciate your time and can't wait to talk next week to you as well. So thanks, Stevie. Great to talk with you. Have a great day, you too, Diane. Have a great day, great weekend. We'll talk next week. Absolutely. Thank Have you, a good one. John Decker. Live from Washington, D.C., just two, three miles from the White House where he lives. Our weather brought to you by Kramer Siding and Window. And they remind you, if you're looking for home improvements, they've got siding, gutter helmet, maybe you're looking for a new door, all kinds of options to explore at KramerSiding.com. Hello again, everyone. Let's check weather for you. Some sort of champagne event this Saturday. A raw, chilly day's worth of weather on tap for the day today with the weather system up the Wabash and heading into the northern and eastern Great Lakes region. That'll mean gusty winds for the next couple of days, but a quick turnaround back into mild Pacific air. Matter of fact, a big warm up slated around here through much of next week. Only to 55 today with periods of rain, maybe not set a thunderstorm. That northeast to north wind steadily increases 20 to 30 and gusty. Could hit 40 miles per hour later this afternoon for a time tonight. Showers will end before midnight, low down to 45. Tomorrow, partly sunny, windy. The high around 60 and the west northwesterly wind, 20 to 30 and gusty. Clearing 43 for tomorrow night for the weekend. Breezy and milder with sun filled skies for Saturday afternoon. Winds turn back to the south, a high at about 71. 78, a windy, warmer, dry Sunday. Monday could be a stray shower at 81. The highs near 80 Tuesday. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms. More rain ahead Wednesday and Thursday. Next week, daytime temperatures, though, still well into the 70s. For CVJ Broadcasting, I'm Rochus, Greg Solier. Hi, I'm Tyler Weaver, president of Carpet Weaver's Flooring and Furniture Gallery. It's time to come home to Carpet Weaver's. We don't want you to just like your new floors. We want you to love them. From waterproof floors and carpet to furnitures and design advice, we've got a team of experts on your side. We'll get you the best price and the best quality products. And complete your home with furniture and accessories. Buy it all with free financing, too. Come home to Carpet Weaver's, where floors, furniture, and family meet. Well, on Thursdays, we give my son a call, Nathaniel's son in Chicago. Today, he's actually in Champaign, awesome. so it's awesome that he's Go around. Line Nathaniel's line. son, how are you? Hey, I'm good, guys. How are you doing? Well, awesome. Nice, nice to talk to you on a windy, rainy day. Did you know is a feature we do every week. Nathaniel digs up stuff. What do you got today? 
Well, you know, this morning we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the Masters tournament that's going on. And to me, despite some of this, you know, unseasonal weather we're having, the Masters is always a nice milestone in the year that spring is upon us. Or at least it's hit the southern part of our country, so mm. it's really, it's got to be only a matter of time until it makes its way to us. Cue, cue change the but, theme. Go change the theme oh for this boy, one. here we go. Yeah. It's the Masters. Very, very nice. Well, now, many of us may know that the Masters is the result of the effort of Mr. Bobby Jones, who's a famous golfer and the only one to have ever won the Grand Slam. But did you know that at the peak of his career, Bobby Jones retired two months after winning the Grand Slam? Hmm. Now, the year is 1930, and Bobby Jones is a 28-year-old lawyer from Atlanta, Georgia. And from May to September of that year, he wins the four majors, which at that time were the British Open and the British Amateur, the U.S. Open and the U.S. Amateur. Now, Bobby Jones was also never professional. He remained an amateur his entire Hmm. life. Now, you can imagine when he retired, he was the most famous, one of the most famous athletes in the world. And he's quoted saying, well, championship golf is really like a cage. And first you're expected to get in there And then you're expected to stay there, but of course, nobody really wants to stay there. So when he retired, he could basically barely go anywhere, let alone a golf course, without being known by someone. So he wanted to find a place where he and his friends could play golf without being bothered. Hmm. So his search began, and shortly into this process, a plot of land came across his desk that was known as Augusta Land. And it was an indigo plantation in an arboretum in Augusta, Georgia, and had been since the Civil War. Now, in 1939, about a year after his retirement, he bought the land for $70,000. And over the next two years, he sought out to build Augusta National. In 1933, it officially opened for tournament golf, and they were originally hoping that they might be able to host something like the U.S. Open. But as some of us may know, the the peak conditions of Augusta National, just that area of Georgia, really happens in the springtime, and the U.S. Open is played in the summer. Well, as fate would have it, a sports journalist by the name of Grantland Rice threw out the suggestion, well, hey, us and all the other sports journalists are down in Florida for spring training from February to March, so why don't you host a tournament for us on our way back up north? And thus, in 1934, the Augusta National Invitational held its first first tournament, and it was an immediate success. Hmm. In 1939, it was renamed the Masters and has been played every year since, except for two years during the World War. Great history. Um, I looked up $70,000 in 1929. That was the year, right? Um, 19, uh, technically, it was 1931, but pretty close, yeah. Close. Uh, it's now worth 1.2. That's okay. not bad. That's not bad. I, mean, that's okay. not, I, mean, I don't know how many acres it is, but it's a bunch. So that's... Um, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, great story. And Bobby never turned pro. I mean, how much he could, I, it just was. And I think he wasn't he pretty emotional out there. I think he was a, had to control that a little bit because it's just golf. Golf says Nathaniel knows. My kids know. It's pretty, pretty difficult. But that's a great yeah. story. Bobby Jones and the Masters has been delayed. They've got two inches of rain down there. And they're not, know, they're not, that. not even uh, letting people in the parking lot right, right. now because it's just they don't want them trampling they on the beautiful garden. They don't want to garden. deal with all that yeah. when they have so many other things to deal with. Nathaniel Sun, well done. Did you know the Masters, one of the greatest sporting events I think there is. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, guys. Take care. Talk to you, you soon. Too. Nathaniel, Nathaniel Sun. Mm-hmm. In Champagne today. All right. ESPN 93.5. Love that theme, too. And and Jim Nance still doing it? I sure hope so. I miss him at the NCAA. Okay. Because he retired last year. That's Vern right. Lundquist. Vern Lundquist. In your life, when Tiger's ball fell in at 16, he's retiring after this year. I see. So he, uh, we're going to miss Vern Lundquist. But who has the, I think it's still Jim Nance. Hello, friends. I mean, it's just so good. The guy, the guy actually, I think I remember Jim Nance was in his 20s. It says veteran broadcaster Jim Nance will do the Masters Woo! broadcast for the 37th time. Yeah, yeah. It's his 39th consecutive year covering the tournament with Trevor Immelman, right, who won good. the Masters in 08. It'll be good. And Jim Nance, I remember when he started, he took over for Brent Musburger. Uh-huh. He was a real young kid. Nice. All right, it is 7.59. The news in another great hour. Aaron Ammons coming up.
Hi, I'm Troy Lands from Lands Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Underground Solutions. Are you tired of dealing with leaky faucets, basement flooding, bursting or leaking pipes? From plumbing maintenance and repairs to installing new water heaters and sump pumps, our goal is to get you up and running as soon as possible. At Lands Plumbing, we have 24-7 emergency service and a team of highly skilled professionals that will work with you to get the job done right the first time. I'm Troy Lands, and you can count on my company because you can count on me. This is Rob Meyer with Provident Financial Group. Political news is sure to dominate the headlines in 2024, adding uncertainty to the markets. This makes a disciplined investment strategy even more critical to achieving your long-term goals. To assure your investments are aligned with your objectives, contact us today at 217-366-3456 or find us online at ProvidentFinancialGroupLLC.com. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. You're listening to WSJK ESPN 93.5 Tuscola Champaign-Urbana, your home for the St. Louis Cardinals. Another report shows inflation creeping up. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News, this time at the wholesale level. The day after consumer price increase led to a sell-off on Wall Street. Producer prices rose two-tenths of a percent last month. The annual wholesale inflation rate also went up in March. We came in with 2.1 percent year over year. The estimate was 2.2, but still, that is stronger than last month. I but want to be clear, we're still jumping. Fox Business Network, Cheryl Cassoni. Now to the Arizona legislature. Shame! Angry Democrats chanting at Republicans for adjourning instead of repealing a looming abortion ban. Shrugged off by a GOP state rep, Teresa Martinez. Simply because we do not want to repeal the pre-Roe law without first having a conversation about it. That law was upheld by Arizona Supreme Court Tuesday, dating back to 1864, banning abortions even in cases of rape and incest. At the White House, a toast from President Biden to Japan's Prime Minister. Join me in raising your glasses to our alliance, to our friendship. Fox's Jared Halpern's at the White House. Both leaders agreed to better integrate military operations and capabilities. Japan is also joining an air defense network with the U.S. and Australia. Today, President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida meet with the leader of the Philippines for a trilateral summit on security and stability in the South China Sea. The top U.S. commander and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin are talking to their Israeli counterparts worried about Iran's threats to launch a retaliation to Israel's attack in Syria that killed an Iranian general. Republican Senator Dan Sullivan tells Fox the U.S. needs to do more. Iran funds and trains the Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah, you don't have any of those terrorist proxies without Iran, and we have not done nearly enough to deter them. The Biden administration's finalizing new rules to expand background checks for more gun buyers. America's listening to Fox News. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. More power. Knocked out to more places in Ukraine again after another Russian attack overnight. And there's also new controversy there over a bill passed by Ukraine's parliament. The law, which is not expected to be popular, will make it easier to identify every draft-eligible man in Ukraine, where many have dodged conscription by avoiding authorities. It comes about a week after Ukraine lowered the draft age from 27 to 25, and will take effect a month after it's signed by President Volodymyr Zelensky. It's not clear when he will sign it. Ukraine's military wants to mobilize up to half a million more troops as Russia has escalated its 
its campaign against Ukraine's energy infrastructure. Authorities said Russian overnight missile and drone attacks again hit power facilities across several regions and completely destroyed the largest power generating facility in the Kyiv region. Tanya J. Powers, Fox News. There are also a lot of power outages in the south, more than 100,000 after a barrage of storms, a tornado twisted areas apart in Louisiana, especially around Slidell, but St. Tammany Parish Fire Chief Chris Kaufman is happy there are no fatalities, a couple of injuries, but uh, just amazing that we got through this, this area, how bad the damage is, and no severely injured people. One person was killed in the stormy weather in Mississippi. Somebody was shot and killed in Washington, D.C. Five others injured, some of them kids. The suspects exited a vehicle and began shooting at people that were outside here in the neighborhood. D.C. Police Chief Pamela Smith, the search continues for those shooters. Gunfire also left people injured in Philadelphia during a Muslim end of Ramadan celebration. Again, our top Fox News story. Another reading showing inflation creeping up in March, this time at the wholesale level. But the reading was better than expected, unlike yesterday. So stock futures, which were down before the report, are now rising ahead of the opening bell. I'm Dave Anthony. This is Fox News. Here's a look at local news. Where well, Illinois may implement a temporary ban on carbon dioxide pipeline projects, the state has unique geological infrastructure that makes it a state that qualifies for underground storage pipelines, but public opposition has stalled such projects. Federal government considering a tax incentive for companies that want to build such pipelines in the state. Monday night, another fiery night for the Champaign School Board. Members divided as they try to decide the best way to fill open seats. Jamar Brown and Mark Tease, now both former board members, resigned from those positions at the beginning of March, 26 community members applied to fill those seats. Cities across Illinois say the governor's plan to do away with the state's grocery tax will be a blow to their budgets. They say the current 1% sales tax makes up a significant part of their finances. Governor says the elimination of the tax will help Illinois families who have been hit hard by increasing prices. And that's a look at what's happening. You're up to date from the Stevie J Broadcasting Newsroom. I'm Jim Miller. Thank you, Jim. 806. So last hour, Greg had mentioned a word. Oxyborius, and um, that well, was. And you yes. even remember it, Steve? Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> From last hour. Thank you. I know. And, and there's, I found the only thing I found is anyone familiar? Somebody on on Facebook asked you a question. Anybody familiar with the word Oxyborius? I grew up from 1954 to 1970, and it was apparently on radio then. But I don't think it's a word. I don't think it's an official. I'm trying no, it's not. to. I'm trying it to look like it up. Uh, but yeah. it's not a word. It's O X I B O R I O U S is the way we spelled it. So it popped up. But somebody had asked about it, and it's supposed to mean like fantastic weather kind of thing, right? Yeah, fantastic okay. above and beyond. You know, quick turnaround, one to uh, you know uh, so end of the spectrum to the other, as yeah, in a positive right. sense. Well, there we have it. That's kind of what we're there. the reason we talked about it. There, that's the definition for the non word. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because right. it's not coming up no. on my online search. No, I, but it, it essentially means what we're talking about today is kind of windy and rainy today. But boy, we could be happy this weekend with exactly. This, huh? Yes, a nice turnaround in attempts. And matter of fact, good part of next week up to about maybe this time, Thursday or Friday next week, before we get a uh, fairly strong cold front to come through the area. We'll take on an almost early summer feel around here. So, yeah, we'll tickle the 80-degree mark, and humidity will climb further into the area, and that'll help to fuel more rain. The transition, it's getting going. Hang in there. Long range is running at about five to seven days. A little behind schedule, but we're going to get there. Despite the kind of a cooler conclusion to April, it is a drier uh, last week to 10 days. So folks trying to get in the fields, your wish will be granted. Not much opportunity over at Augusta. There's still a couple of showers have redeveloped there around the Augusta area. Nothing heavy and severe. Boy, there has been flooding rain running from about the outer banks of uh, North Carolina all the way down into the Florida Panhandle. Better weather over there and as in Georgia uh, tomorrow and into the weekend. Around here, some heavier rain south of Evansville. Some shower activity across Indianapolis. A couple of the rainfall totals in out of Vermillion County are tipping at more than an inch. Inch and a half as you got down towards, for example, around the Sidell area. So we've had some pretty good soaking rains across the air and down to a few sprinkles, 52. We're in Savoy, 50 at Rantoul. Not much of a climb today, probably about 55, the best we could muster up for you. And wind, you feel it now, it'll be on the increase further at 20 to 30, gust of 40 miles per hour. A couple of showers linger early on tonight, down to 45, partly sunny, windy, 60 tomorrow. Then for the weekend, sunshine, a nice breeze, 71 Saturday, 78 on Sunday. Uh, back into a stray shower late Monday, a couple of thunderstorms Tuesday and Wednesday. All 
all the while, high temperatures either side of 80 degrees. For Steve and Broadcasting, I'm Greg Solgan. All right, buddy. Thank you. It is uh, 8.09. Former Muhammad Seymour football coach, coaching legend, Frank Dutton has passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was uh, 79. Yes, the funeral's planned for Sunday. Yeah, big figure, uh, literally, figuratively. He's, uh-huh. he's, a, he's a large man. Big, tall, right? Uh, good man. I, I've talked to him before, but it had been years and years. But he was a legendary coach. Most wins ever, Muhammad Seymour football. That's right. And actually, their first state championship game won in 1977 for the Bulldogs. Dutton is also the namesake for the high school's football field. Uh, Dutton say, says his legacy will not only live on at the school, but the community as well. And you know what Frank Dutton did when he wasn't coaching, and, well, he, and you he, wouldn't tell me. Well, it's just as anybody, and I want to make sure my memory is correct, but does anybody remember Frank Dutton did something kind of as a hobby on the side that you know, earned a little money, but it, it's an, just an odd pairing. What did Frank Dutton do? Does anybody know that? That's like 45 years ago, so hmm. I doubt if anybody listening... Knows what I'll give you the answer here in a second of what okay, I think it was. You can also text in if you have a yeah. Frank Dutton story to tell and you're in the Muhammad Seymour area and, and recall the legacy of Coach Frank Dutton in, in football, 359-2255. Yeah, but that's the Fisher National Bank text line, mm-hmm. but I'll give you that in just a second. Uh, also, uh, all the charges dropped locally for Terrence Shannon Jr., and apparently some of the reason is he couldn't have access to any of the stuff. That's like, right. See, that's what makes, makes this whole thing weird to me, is that there were a bunch of Kansas basketball players with Terrence Shannon yeah. in the bar when yeah. the alleged issue happened, attack mm-hmm. happened, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It was a one-minute to one-and-a-half-minute interlude that's in right. a bar with no witnesses. And so we don't know. Right. And so it's very difficult. But So, so anyway, there's no access to the any reporting in on Lawrence, it. In Lawrence, Kansas. Police reports. It's still going to have... The May 10 hearing in, in yes. Lawrence that Terrence has to be at and all of that. But the evidence is what they didn't have. They didn't have so the, so no discipline, no anything. That's right. Not, so not he, sure what they would have done with discipline Terrence done anyway. You have I, a dropping investigation. Yeah. And he dropped and his lawsuit that's against right. them. Yeah. I was just going to get to that. So Terrence Jannon Jr. Uh, also issuing a statement on X or Twitter or whatever we're calling it yesterday, just thanking the fans and Illini Nation for their unwavering support throughout my couple of years here. The staff and fans have really made this experience memorable. I will never forget the relationships I've built in my time here. So it uh, could be a good draft experience for him in June, widely expected to be the program's First first round draft pick since Myers Leonard in 2012. Yeah, we thought Io DeSumo would be, but mm-hmm. Io went in the second round. Uh, okay, so there's that story. Frank Dutton actually wrote jokes. Oh, look at that. Coach Dutton used to submit jokes for the Jay Leno Tonight Show. And he'd get on there and he'd get paid every time they used it. Is that but right? But Frank Dutton wrote a ton of material for who's Jay Leno. Jay Leno's coming in yeah. Saturday night and to I'm, the State Farm Center with gu- Arsenio Hall. Guaranteed Jay Leno would remember Frank Dutton. Is that right? Yeah. There's another overlapping thing. I was talking about So somebody my, knew that? Yeah. Well, Andy good, and Muhammad. Good job, Andy. Exactly. But I remember those days of talking about Frank Dutton, Muhammad Seymour football coach, wrote jokes for Jay Leno. Wow. Well, and you wrote a joke book. He didn't contribute to that. The no, NCAA that, was, that was a whole different <laughs> okay. era. Because that was way back when. Well, guys like Andy remember the, the 1990 investigation to the Illinois basketball program. Yes. And the Dion Thomas and the Bruce Pearl, who's yes. now the Auburn coach. Grrr. And the And the investigation went on for 17 months. And I was sitting across the studio, in, in the studio, across from Jim Turpin, the great late Jim Turpin. And, and both, when we heard the announcement of what their decision was... Both of our faces got red. Like, what? It's like a non-decision, Well, they, right? they said, the NCAA said, we did not find anything, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. <laughs> what the heck is that? Okay. 17 months? <laughs> and so we got like a few scholarships kicked away, which really hurt us. So then I was so outraged. We just all were as a community. So I was doing morning show again back then. And and said this is I just I, ah! so I wrote a, right. I wrote a joke book in five days. Mm-hmm. 
And we put nice it, therapy for you there. Oh my gosh. Stevie. It was like, how many investigators does it take to question a witness? Seven. Two to write down the answers, three to tape, uh, uh, three to change the answers, and two to hold them down. I mean, it's it that kind of. <laughs> okay. well, it was just silly, but it was like, it was a little sharp. I mean, I mm. read it now and I'm going, wow. So in 1990, we released it, I think, at Thanksgiving. And by December 20th, we, no, we released it December 7th. And by December 20, we sold 7,500 copies. Wow. It was a regional bestseller. There's one week in my life where the region, the entire Midwest region, uh, NCAA joke book was number one. David Letterman was number five. Okay, then. And then it ended. But it was, <laughs> it was like a, a, a tiny, it like was, the size of your hand It was book. supposed to be $4.95. Right. It was like a little note card mm -hmm. size, 50 pages right. of jokes. Well, and, and and I was my, to, my dad used to say, I'm a regular reader of some of this stuff because we'd have something next to the toilet. <laughs> oh, and that was one of them. Well, I'm honored. <laughs> anyway, it, it, was, uh, it was supposed to be four ninety five, And when I got it in my hand, I said, this feels like three ninety five. <laughs> so I lowered the price immediately. Okay. Every day after I was off the air, I drove the joke joke books to all the bookstores, but I had to go through St. Louis and a distributor, ISBN number, all those things. Okay. And we sold, I mean, Schnooks and, and Champagne was just open, the one on Mattis. And Dave Beckerley sold a thousand copies of it. Pages for All Ages sold 3,000 copies. Nice. Everybody got it as stocking stuff. What it was is a release. Yes. It sold in Overland Park. I got calls from Norm Stewart from Missouri. I got a call from Jerry Tarkanian. Okay. He called me from Las Vegas. Jerry Tarkanian. I love your book. <laughs> <laughs> and he was UNLV. UNLV, and they were number one. Right. That was back in the day. And Norm, Norm Stewart famously, famously said, I, I appreciate your book and you sending it to me. I shall take it home and read it in my closet. Exactly. Yeah, well, that was good stuff. Anyway, um, that was, uh, that's <laughs> Frank Dutton, the late, great Frank Dutton. Our prayers with his family. 79, former Muhammad Seymour, mm -hmm. legendary coach, most winningest coach in their history. All right, it's quarter after eight. We check your sports headlines. Well, we already hit with uh, Frank Dutton and Terrence Shannon Jr. Those are stories that are definitely trending in our area. So we also want to talk about all the losses, I guess. Philadelphia beat St. Louis 4-3 to yesterday, so they've got a game against Arizona tomorrow. San Diego over the Cubs 10-2. to They'll be in Seattle with a late start at 8.40 on Friday. And you'll hear that action over on US 105.9. Always fun to take in the games if you're near Pia's at 1609 West Springfield Avenue. Cleveland over the Chicago White Sox 7-6 to in 10 innings. Cleveland will host Cincinnati at 640 on Friday. So you're not at the point where you're following Cincinnati too much and, and thinking we could go. Well, my son-in-law has played with all of them in minor leagues, so I'm kind of curious how they're all doing, but right. I, don't, I don't go game to game. I still follow the Cardinals more and certainly uh, track the Cubs. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now, we were talking with Illinois head basketball coach Brad Underwood yesterday about the beloved TV analyst Bill Raftery. Raftery? Raftery. Raftery. Yeah. And Oakland uh, head coach... Greg Campy and, and you know the Yukon win and all that will definitely come up on Tuesday April 16th at Gordyville for this huge yeah. coaches versus cancer event that has kind of a western theme so you can wear your jeans and your plaid shirt or whatever or flannel shirt and your boots it's a blast I think he said what 1700 or something no I there? know it's gigantic it used to be a thousand I know so that's almost double so uh, if you're wanting tickets to that now's the time to move on that because it's almost sold out at least that's what they're saying. And well, there's so I, many people. That there there are, there. but if you want to, you know, get with an earshot, right? I mean, it's a big place. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Farmer City Racing, 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 racing. Tomorrow and Saturday, the Illini 100 is a blast. I think it's 40 bucks. The hot butt laps start at 6:30. You can just go to farmercityracing.com for more details on that. So excited! And I think the drive is having uh, another driver or, or person in charge. I think his name is Steve Francis mm -hmm. on today. And, okay. and we had Brandon Shepard, who's won the Illini 100 in Farmer City three times on yesterday. So um, anyway, good stuff. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, we'll get uh, Aaron Ammons on next. Oh, yeah. The county uh, clerk and county recorder, right? Yes. Two things. That's That'll right. be coming up. Get the roof your home deserves by Roof Doctors, your residential roofing specialist that has always offered the best warranties in the industry, like our non-prorated 50-year warranty. Our customers love that we are family-owned and locally operated. We make our customer needs our top priority. 
With over 30 years experience and the best customer service, give Roof Doctors a call today for your free estimate at 328-7529. In your community and for your community, Roof Doctors. PDR Automotive has now been serving the Champaign-Urbana area for over 50 years. To give you some perspective, 50 years ago ended the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War, and it was when Secretariat won the Triple Crown. So what does that mean for you and your vehicle? Whether you need a carburetor overhauled or your new vehicle computer system diagnosed or programmed, PDR Automotive has the experienced, knowledgeable staff that can handle all your automotive needs. Online at PDRauto.com, they are what's best for your truck or car. They are... PDR. Hello again, everyone. Let's check weather. Free Central Illinois, Champagne and Panama Saturday. Chilly, raw days worth of weather on tap for the day today with the weather system over the lower Wabash making its move to the north and northeast. We'll get into the wraparound drier side of it for the day tomorrow. Quickly moving back in milder to warmer Pacific and Gulf air. And temperatures will do just that over the course of the weekend. More rain in scattered fashion next week. Periods of rain for the day today. An isolated thunderstorm. Highs nearing 55 with that northeast to north wind increasing 20 to 30 and gusty. Windy tonight Occasional showers ending by midnight, low down to 45 with a northwest to west wind, 15 to 25 and gusty. Tomorrow, partly sunny, windy, the high around 60, the west northwesterly wind, 20 to 30 and gusty. Diminishing winds later tomorrow night, clear in 43. For the weekend, turning breezy and milder Saturday afternoon with sunshine, 71, 78 on Sunday. Could be a couple of showers and thunderstorms breaking out Monday, more likely Tuesday. Wednesday next week, highs Monday and Tuesday up at around 80 degrees. For Stevie J Broadcasting, I'm Peter Greg Solgay. I'm Lauren Simonetti, and this is the Fox Business Report. The producer price index rose just two-tenths of a percent from February to March. The reading is the same for core monthly PPI, excluding food and energy. It's an improvement from the previous month. Though the PPI for the year ending in March was up 2.1 percent, that's the strongest increase in 11 months. The consumer price index rose 3.5 percent in the year ending in March, excluding food and energy. That increase was 3.8 percent. The number of new claims for unemployment benefits declined by 11,000 last week to 211,000, showing more strength in the labor market. This morning, the European Central Bank reported that inflation pressures have eased there, though it left interest rates unchanged. It did suggest a cut may be coming. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Kosolda. Invested in you. I'm Dana Perino. Join me for my podcast, Perino on Politics. Every Monday, I'm going to talk to people I trust in politics as they tell me what they're seeing and thinking in the 2024 election cycle. This week on Perino on Politics, Americans across the country will be witnessing a new moon. But as far as the election goes, it is the same old politics. I'm joined by the founder of the Stewart Group, my very good friend, Don Stewart. We'll discuss student loans, abortion, inflation, and much, much more. Available now on Apple, Spotify, and foxnewspodcast.com. April is Autism Awareness Month, and Jet's Pizza would like to recognize some of their stellar employees on the autism spectrum who show up on time, navigating the public transit system, and always smiling. Preparing the fresh cut veggies and grating cheese, stirring Mama Jet's special sauce, and making the work environment fun happens at both Jet's Round Barn location and near campus at Neal and Green. As Jet supports our autism community this April, take note of the gala at the City Center on April 17th and the CU Autism Network Walk and Resource Fair at the Savoy Rec Center, April 20th. Uh, Mr. County Clerk and Recorder, are you there? Yes, I am. It's Aaron Ammons. Cue the music. Yes. I didn't know you liked Stevie Wonder. Come on, man. Come on now. You know, he called me. Is that right? He called me because Gary O'Brien, the late, great Gary O'Brien of the Assembly Hall, uh, was with him, and he was singing at the um, Assembly Hall at the time. And I answered the phone. I said, uh, hello. And he said, Stevie? I said, yeah. He said, Stevie. I said, oh, come on, man. Really? That's you, man? Come on, man. That's you, man. You're my new best friend, man. When Aaron and Carol have their show on the weekend on the radio, I feel like this is bump music for you, isn't it, Aaron? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. He won. You got a little little cool to you if you're like Stevie Wonder, Mm -hmm. but it's awesome. All right, so it's Aaron Ammons, uh, county clerk and county recorder. So tell me about the uh, primary. We weren't thrilled about Philo not having a polling place, Mr. County Clerk. So Yes, I know, and I'm not thrilled about the shortage of election judges. So I've been trying to work with the two parties, in particular the Republican 
get me some more election judges. So maybe you can help me out with that. Let's get it. We need we need uh, people to. And it's not like a volunteer thing anymore. You get paid, right? Absolutely. You know, I, I read an article from back in 1992. Uh, I think Paul Wood wrote it for the Gazette, talking about how the judges uh, at a certain at one point they were getting paid like five dollars a day yeah. for the same type of uh, right. for the same type of work. And and back then they had a shortage of Democratic judges. So as as much as things change, they still stay the, uh, stay the same. You know. So it's it's more you have plenty of Democratic judges, but very very few Republican relative, right? Yeah, so right now, uh, well, let's just talk a little bit. We had a 16% voter turnout for this primary. So you said 1-6, one, one, six, 16? 1-6, one, six, okay. 16%. Um, now, the vote by mail turnout was 60%, so it helps improve the voter access and the voter turnout, but it still was a, a very, very low turnout uh, for 16%, and uh, we had to cut 15 polling locations because we were short, like, 49 Republican election judges, and as we move into the 2020, uh, I mean, the uh, the general election for this year, we're going to be even shorter if we don't have uh, more people sign up. We're going to have the same problem. So we really need people to sign up uh, for election judges, Democrats and Republicans, but in particular Republicans. Okay, so I, I can't, like, go and do four-hour training, get my, I think it's 200 bucks, isn't it, for the, the day? 220. 220? Mm. Okay, well, yeah. if, if, if I do all that and we want to be an election judge, can I say I want to do it in Philo or, or I can't do that? So sometimes you're able to do that. The commission judges that are the responsibility of the two parties to give to us, we try our best to put them exactly in their location where they want to be. But as you can see, with so many moving parts and not enough people, we do need people to be flexible. Uh, and so sometimes we do have to send people in different locations because we need a certain ratio of Democrats and Republicans. So most judges are very open to that, but some are pretty um, staunch in their positions, and they say, hey, if I can't serve here, then I don't want to serve. We try to accommodate that, but we can't always accommodate that. So, Aaron, you said 15 polling places had to close. How do you determine how many are open then and how many were open in our region? Yeah, so we did um, basically, when I came in, we had to close 11 locations because of COVID. And we never got those locations back. And we've been struggling with uh, the number of, uh, of election judges that we need ever since then, as well as with 15,000 people on the permanent vote by mail list, it did allow us to do some consolidation that helped us with that issue, with that problem, but it's still not enough. So we try to make sure that we close locations that were covered in the rural areas as well as the inner city areas. And when you look at the list of what I closed and chose to close, you'll see that I tried to balance that out as much as I could. All right, so you're hopeful that everything is going to be up and running for the general, the normal places. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, Steve. You know, I'm not very hopeful mm -hmm. um, that we need another 162 election judges on top of the uh, 232 that we needed before. So if we couldn't get to 232, I think it's going to be almost impossible to get to, to 400. So um, I'm really encouraging people to look at making a plan to vote early at one of the early voting locations or to sign up for the vote by mail list because you can't go wrong there. If you can't get to the polling location, if you own the list, you'll still get your ballot. So I'm trying to make sure people are planning ahead. We've got months to plan ahead to talk about this. And so that's why I'm coming on the show to help let people understand the uh, the dire need that we have for election judges and what that impact will be in November if we do not get the uh, requisite number of judges. So what what, 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 what does it take to well, be an election? Well, judge? what do you do? Do you, what call, do you do? call your office or how, what's the process look like? Yeah. So you can call the office 217-384-3724 and talk to one of the staff in the elections division and they will give you directions on how to, to sign up. Uh, to let them know we can put you on the list that you want to be an election judge. We do intend to start the training earlier this year to try to get people uh, time to really put that four-hour training in. It is four hours of training, but you get to do it on your own schedule. Uh, you can do it online. We're going to have in-person training and opportunities for people to come during early voting to get trained. So you can go on the website, campaigncountyclerk.gov, and uh, and you can you can sign up there as well. All right, 
two more questions. Somebody wants to know, uh, if you're an independent, you got to pick in the primary. you got to pick a Democrat or a Republican, no, no alternative. So somebody says, I'm, I'm an independent. There's no other deal in the primaries, right? That's, that's correct. Now, there are some situations where people uh, push for an independent ballot. But if you want an independent ballot, that means you're only going to vote if there's a referendum question in your area. Okay. So some people who do not like to vote in primaries, they wanted to get uh, independent, uh, to vote independent, so to speak. But they would have to only they would only get a ballot that has referendum questions, and most of the time that didn't qualify for the people who wanted to vote independent. Here's but the, in the general, we don't have to worry about that. You don't have to choose a side. You just go in, give your information, and we will uh, we'll get you get you taken care of if, if you're a registered voter. There's a question at three five nine twenty two fifty five about being a U.S. citizen to vote, and what does your office do to ensure that new voters are U.S. citizens? So. Uh, the registration process, we take the paperwork, we take the information, but it is sent to the State Board of Elections who does the vetting process of whether or not the uh, IDs and the information that has been provided um, uh, is adequate and it meets the criteria. And then they send that back to us and determine and let us know whether or not we can register this person or whether this person is registered or not. So that is something that the State Board of Elections handles. It is not something that my office takes care of. There's another question. Why do seniors have to renew their over 65 exemption every year? Over 65? I think you may be talking about property taxes now, and that would be a question for the county assessor's office, not my office. Okay. I don't handle the, the, the exemption. Okay. Aaron Ammons, uh, county clerk and recorder. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, didn't you think it was odd that I ran into you twice in one day, like three weeks ago? I thought that was odd. Oh, yeah, that was really crazy. I thought you were following me. No, I thought you were following me. I thought you were following Who's me. Who's talking? Who's no, here? He's follow- it's just I, I saw you in, 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 in at something in the day and then at night the same restaurant. And I said, if I see you again tonight, you need to get under your bed because something's going on here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I appreciate um, ha- having you on and maybe we do it again sometime. And, right. we can- and what is the website, Aaron, in case anybody has questions about this? Yes, indeed. We need you to go to ChampaignCountyClerk.com, ChampaignCountyClerk.com. I think I might have said .gov earlier. ChampaignCountyClerk.com, and you can get all the information that you need on what, uh, how to serve as an election judge, the application. Everything is right there. So we want to strongly encourage you to get out to uh, make a plan to early vote or uh, to sign up for that permanent vote by mail list. It's a win-win situation. You'll get your ballot in the mail. All you have to do is come in and vote in person, even if you don't want to use it. All you have to do is come and vote in person. So if we so rallied, we'll be able to- if we rallied and got 100 new Republican judges, could that mean that the polling places would be open if you put all your Democratic friends oh, for in sure. there? We'll, if we have 100 new Republican judges, uh, which is would be great. That would be wonderful, Stevie. So I know you got the clout, you got the power, you got the reach. Let's get them in there. I'd love that. Let's see if we can rally. <laughs> yeah, okay. and, you, and you said 2,200 a day, right? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, you give, zero, give, give me, me 2,200 a day. I'll promise you 100 election <laughs> justice. <laughs> I will. 220 I bucks. They should get paid that. I believe they should get paid that. We're on the front lines for democracy, just like our other brothers and sisters in uniform are. And if they can get what they need to take care of the country abroad, then we should get what we need to take care of the uh, the country right here domestically. So I I think they should get paid uh, for the work that they do. Uh, I had a guy, an election judge, called me the other day and sent me an email saying once he did the math, it was like $9.33 an hour. I think that's absolutely ridiculous for the amount of work that they put in a long day. We're also trying to get the day cut in half or broken up so that we we don't have to work all those judges don't have to work 16, 17 hour days. Uh, but I'm working on that, but the legislature is, is slow to, to make that change. Well, right. and I had it in about results, and how come we don't get results quickly these days? Uh, the results have been the same for, for 10 years or 20 years. The, first of all, on election night, nothing is official. So what has changed is with the increase in vote by mail, there are outstanding ballots. And so the results come in just fine, right? And, uh, but the outstanding ballots sometimes uh, prevent the news stations from calling the race, so they can't do their marketing that they like to do and call the races in excitement. So that's one of the issues. 
Plus, people need to understand that the election judges bring the the uh, thumb drives back to us from polling locations all over the county. And they have a process of closing the polling locations. Some take 30 minutes to close. Some take two hours to close, depending on the number of people who voted in that polling location. And I can't post results that I don't have. So I can't post them until those judges get back from those polling locations and after closing those polling loca- locations and bring those thumb drives to us. Okay. We're going to do this again sometime. Yes, uh, Aaron Ammons. Uh, by the way, the person who, who said it, how do I... Why do I have to get exemptions when I'm 65 mm-hmm. every year? The assessor's office said it's the clerk's office, by the way. Just FYI. Okay. What? So, yeah. That's what okay. No, 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 no. I don't have anything to do with exemptions. Okay. <laughs> All right, listen, appreciate uh, your time, Aaron. Thank you. We appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Aaron Ammons, who's county clerk and county recorder. ESPN 93.5. 8.34 in Champaign-Urbana. We call our pit master, Tim Onstott, on Thursdays mm-hmm. at this time. Stand by. News. I'm Chris Foster. Shame on you! Shame on you! Democrats in Arizona's legislature after Republicans blocked the repeal of a near-total abortion ban and then adjourned. State Supreme Court Tuesday upheld the ban passed in 1864 before Arizona was a state. We do not want to repeal the pre-Roe law without first having a conversation about it. Republican Teresa Martinez, there's an agreement not to enforce the ban for 45 days. Police in Washington, D.C. are looking for two men who shot six people, killing one man in Washington, D.C. Our preliminary investigation indicates the suspects exited a vehicle and began shooting at people that were outside here in the neighborhood. Police Chief Pamela Smith, two children, nine and 12 years old, are wounded. Wholesale inflation comes in at 2.1% annually, 0.2% for the month. America's listening to Fox News. The average American throws away almost five pounds of trash per day, half which ends up in a landfill. At Two Men in a Junk Truck, when we pick up your unwanted furniture, appliances, trash, and office equipment, we make it a priority to divert those items from your local landfill. Two Men in a Junk Truck looking for partners that share our vision of environmental responsibility. If you and your organization can reuse, upcycle, recycle some of these items, we would love to work with you. Contact us at Two Men in a Junk Truck.com. We want to make room for what matters most. This is Starla Carr with Provident Financial Group. We are honored to be celebrating 15 years of service and want to thank all of our amazing clients for their confidence and trust. We look forward to meeting the needs of current and future clients in the years to come. Contact us today at 217-366-3456 or find us online at ProvidentFinancialGroupLLC.com. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Looking for a place to host a corporate meeting, intimate gathering, or a large-scale celebration? If so, the University of Illinois' Alice Campbell Alumni Center offers the perfect space and staff to make your function a success. A few rooms offered at the center include the Elegant Ballroom, the Richmond Family Gallery, and the Premier and Professional Executive Boardroom. For more information on renting a space at the Alice Campbell Alumni Center, visit uiaa.org slash alumni dash center or call 1-800-355-2580. Go Illini! When it comes to finding a reliable vehicle, look no further than Sarah Champagne, your trusted automotive destination. They carry a lineup of... You have money laying all around your house. You just don't know it. And no, I don't mean selling your great-grandma's good china. I mean all the old metal items you don't want to use or get rid of. Don't pay someone to haul it away. Bring it into Max Twin City Recycling and get paid to have it taken off your hands. They love new customers and are more than willing to walk you through their process step-by-step. Come check them out at 2808 North Lincoln Avenue in Urbana. Get the roof your home deserves by Roof Doctors, your residential roofing specialist that has always offered the best warranties in the industry, like our non-prorated 50-year warranty. Our customers love that we are family-owned and locally operated. We make our customer needs our top priority. With over 30 years' experience and the best customer service, give Roof Doctors a call today for your free estimate at 328-7529. In your community and for your community, Roof Doctors. Roof Doctors. 
Here's a look at local news. I'm Jim Miller. Communities across central Illinois donating used eclipse glasses to be enjoyed by other eclipse enthusiasts around the world. In Champaign, Greener Goods is encouraging people to drop off unwanted eclipse glasses at their location at 110 South Neal Street outside of Champaign-Urbana. Villas of Hollybrook Senior Living Communities accepting the glasses as donations. One central Illinois community mourning the death of a legendary high school football coach, former Muhammad Seymour head coach Frank Dutton died unexpectedly from a cardiac arrest. He holds the record for the most wins in school history. He took the Bulldogs to their first state championship game. The scheduled shutdown of the Rivian manufacturing plant in Normals begun. Shutdown was scheduled to make technological upgrades at that facility. Shutdown began this past Saturday. It'll last until April 28. The company says it plans to produce some 57,000 electric vehicles this year, the same as last year. You're up to date from the Stevie J Broadcasting Newsroom. I'm Jim Miller. And now, a brand new show called Smoke, where we help you with your grill and making the best meat ever with award-winning competition pitmaster Tim Onstock. Smoke in Tim's grill. He's the best brisket maker ever. Smoke in Tim's grill. And now, award-winning competition pitmaster Tim on the start. You ready to come back? Because that was awesome yeah. two weeks ago when you were in We're Fido. hungry. Man, <laughs> unbelievable. Any, anytime, we'll pack it up. Woo! A lot, hey, of, uh, a lot of work. Hey, Stevie, yeah. uh, what, what is the condition of your grill gr- grates on your grill right now? I can't you got believe, them all cleaned up and I shiny? I can't believe you'd ask yeah, that because yeah. I was thinking. I'm thinking about ours it's just, too. It, I just thought the metal grew, you know, because it's bigger and it's <laughs> kind of clumpy at the... <laughs> I mean, I tell me how to get that um, without a chisel how and many a hammer. Layers is there? It's quite a bit. So what? Anyway, uh, he's going to help me with that because he's going to help me how how to clean that thing. How do you clean your grill? How do you do that? Well, that that was one of the things when we were uh, up there cooking a couple weeks ago. Had a couple of people say, "How do you keep that smoker so clean?" Hmm. Um, and we don't really do a whole lot with it. I break it down, clean it maybe once every three or four cooks. But there are some tricks, especially for your grills at home, um, people don't think about, but that's your cooking cooking surface. That's like washing your pots and pans at home. Um, But there is a product um, I found that it makes it really easy. It's it's called a Vapo Rust, and that gets that uh, rusty, nasty-looking stuff off, and basically you just get a flat, large pan that you can set your grate in, put enough to cover your Mm -hmm. grate, enough of this liquid in let it sit for four or five hours and it it just disappears you gotta be kidding wait a minute just squirt 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 and four or five hours later it kind of falls off well you soak it you soak it in there okay um, I got and it. it has to be submerged um but the stuff is non-toxic it won't kill you if you eat it but then you just rinse it off wipe it down and dry it and i've done some miracle stuff with that i had stuff that i didn't think would come clean at all that's amazing um, so so it's uh it's uh it's a menards or something or where would i get that uh, i found it at tractor supply locally it's about 35 dollars a gallon so it's not real cheap but you can reuse it too all right so it's soak it in the what is it called evapo rust evapo rust okay and then yes. i'm gonna, and then i'm gonna love what it looks like because i really would like to do this evapo well you'll rust. have to wipe it you'll have to wipe it down afterwards and, yeah. and rinse it off but it it works okay uh one thing a safety thing don't ever use those wire brushes that they sell at menards or hmm. wherever in the grill section um i can't tell you how many things i've read uh and heard people those bristles come off They'll stick to a grate. Um, they'll then you put a hot dog on there for the kids. It'll stick to that. Kid gets it and they're stuck in their gum or okay. swallows wow. it. God well, thank forbid. You. I'm, I've only been doing that one with that I bristle know. forty years. You've been doing that all your yeah, life. Exactly. All my life. And, so what do I do? I don't have anything to grick, 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 and don't have anything. What do I do? Well, uh, you get a piece of aluminum foil, about a, a foot long. Piece, just tear a foot long piece of uh, aluminum foil off wad it up into a loose ball and when you crinkle it up it makes a bunch of sharp edges in really? there and you just wipe down your grates with those with that aluminum foil. Well I went to a fancy schmancy restaurant place and bought aluminum foil for fifty two dollars and it's like what? 
$52. It's kind of a big restaurant roll, but it, it's really thick, so that's going to work well. So, mm. I, I, yeah. And that would be after the grill cools, of course, and then it'll like that, right? Yep, yep. Okay. We uh, we buy those 1,000-foot rolls and oh. go through about three of them a year. Oh, man. It's a lot of money. Wow. The good foil is a lot of money. Everything's a lot of money now. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a great tip. All right, so aluminum foil and the um, since I... Evapo rust. Yeah, I knew yep. that. I was just testing you. Evapo rust. Evapo rust, because I want to look that up, because I need that. Soak it. Right. Wash it Where off. Where is that? Like in the hardware well, section? Well, he said he gets it at the track. I wonder if uh, some of our place, Big R or something. Right. I wonder if they'd have that. Uh, yeah, they, they Farm might and have Fleet? It. Farm, Farm and Fleet, Fleet might have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to get well, some of that stuff. So. You know, they say that you find something, always find something in the last place you look. The <laughs> last place I looked was tra- Tractor Supply. That's where I found it, so I haven't looked for it anymore. Well, they might be able to ship that too. I just go online, look it up. Evapo Rust. Yeah, it, it's, it's non toxic. Non toxic, okay. non hazardous. Good. Hey, so um, tell me about uh, how we're doing at uh, Dedicated Diesel Dixie Chopper and how those lawnmowers are selling. Well, they, Andy had a real good week last week and, and sold a bunch of mowers. Um, Donna came flying in here on our broom a little while ago and told me Z2s, get the Z2s out. So uh, we've got, uh, she said, $1,500 off any residential Z2 or Z2 HP. So you've got. 23 and 24 four horsepower mowers, uh, 42, 48, 54 inch decks. That she's just going to knock 1500 dollars off right right off the top. That and that's a residential mower. Well, but those started um, what 10,000, 15,000? How much are those? Oh no, the um, the MSRP on those are between uh, 7500 and uh, nine thousand. So I so get fifteen hundred dollars off that. That's a heck of a deal. That's very good. Just right off the top, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and those are residential Z twos. Yeah. Z2s. yeah. Yep, yeah. they're residential, but uh, they'll mow like like a commercial mower in, in your own yard. And then you, I've got fast. a place to take it to get a service too. Right. That's dedicated oh, yeah. diesel on Triumph. That's going north on Route Forty Five. You turn left. Thirteen on Triumph. thirteen Triumph Drive. That's exactly right. Okay, so uh, Gail Frerich's Trucking. How are we doing there? Well, um, we're doing good. We're fighting um, this darn fuel. Everybody talks about inflation. It all starts with fuel and how much it takes to get the product there. Um, our wholesale fuel on January 3rd was 220 a gallon wholesale, and now we're up to 272. So um, the uh, policies that are going on in Washington certainly aren't helping with energy costs, and that's a big inflation driver. Yeah. All right, Tim Onstott, pitmaster extraordinaire. A great help on cleaning the grill. I have zero excuses now to live with what I've got, so I can go ahead and throw do away those brushes. Don't, yeah, don't hurt good. somebody. Never heard of that. Okay. Never heard of that. Right. Tim, you the man. We appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. You as well. Dedicated diesel and Gail for X trucking. Mm-hmm. Piss ma- pit master extraordinaire. That's right. Barbecueologist. Barbecueologist. Tim Onstott. Great guy, too. Good dude. 846. When it comes to finding a reliable vehicle, look no further than Sarah Champagne, your trusted automotive destination. They carry a lineup of top brands, including Honda, BMW, Subaru, GMC, and Buick. And they're not just about cars. They're about people. Their team is dedicated to providing you with trustworthy service and dependable vehicles that fit your lifestyle. Experience the difference at Sarah Champagne. Visit Sarah, S-E-R-R-A, Champagne.com. Hey, where are you headed? To Kelsey Furniture in Tuscola. What do they have there? What don't they have there? Living room furniture, benches, chests, love seats, sectionals, tables, bedroom sets, hutches, nightstands, end tables, cabinets, mirrors, stools, clocks, lamps, pillows, rugs, desks, media consoles, patio furniture, tempur mattresses, and more. So, everything. Yeah, probably could have uh, just said that. Kelsey Furniture, quality for less. By now, you've all heard the expression. When you turn the key and the car won't run, call 367-9481 for PDR Automotive. They are what's best for your truck or car. They are PDR. But who are they? They, the PDR staff, understand that a name is only as good as the people that represent it. The PDR staff has more than 335 years of combined automotive experience. Several employees now on staff for more than 25 years. PDR, more than just a name. Family owned and operated, now celebrating over 50 years in business. 
Well, it's the 88th Masters, but it's delayed in this first few hours with all the showers, maybe an inch and a half to two and a half inches of rainfall before 11 a.m. and winds up to 45 miles an hour. And, you know, our weather's crappy here today, but the Farmer City Racing has canceled their practice for this evening. But they're all thumbs up for Friday, Saturday and, and, you know, for the Masters on Sunday, too. So... Uh, do you think it's realistic that they can make up that time, Stevie? Um, maybe. I'm okay. not sure. It, 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 it's going to be – they always want to get, you know, four rounds in. Right. you got to get the uh, 72 holes for the Masters. But it's going to be in a lot more holes tomorrow on Saturday. If so. they do have a clearing this morning, you'll see Jack Nicholas, Gary Player, and Tom Watson with that ceremonial tee shot to get in that Masters mode. SIU beat uh, Illinois in softball 6-1 to yesterday. They've got Purdue tomorrow at 5 if you want to check that out. Bulls and Pistons in action tonight. Uh, St. Louis Blues over the Blackhawks 5-2 to was trending in our area. And all our local favorite MLB teams lost and are in action tomorrow. That's sports. I'm Diane Ducey. Tavis Towing reminds all Illini fans, when you're on the road and see lights flashing, move over and use caution passing. Let's all get home safe tonight. Ever wonder why you pay your bank to have a checking account? Fisher National Bank does too. You see, they offer free rewards cashback checking that gives you cash back on debit purchases, no service fees or balance requirements. Simply make 12 debit card purchases, receive electronic statements, and have one direct deposit in a monthly cycle. It's so simple. Reward yourself today with rewards cashback checking. Learn more at any branch or FisherNational.com. Fisher National Bank. Exceptional communities. Exceptional people. Member FDI. I see. BMW, Buick, GMC, Honda, and Subaru. Welcome to Sarah Champagne. We can handle all your car repairs on site, including paintless dent repair, bumpers, windshields, everything in between. We have an amazing selection of new or pre owned vehicles to choose from. Shop from home and buy online or reserve your vehicle before it hits our website or dealership. Sarah Champagne is home of the Sarah One Price Promise, delivering an honest and transparent buying experience. Hurry in or shop online at sarahchampagne.com. Hello again, everyone. Let's check weather for Central Illinois, Champaign and Panama Saturday, chilly, raw days worth of weather on tap for the day today with the weather system over the lower Wabash making its move to the north and northeast. We'll get into the wraparound drier side of it for the day tomorrow, quickly moving back in milder to warmer Pacific and Gulf air. And temperatures will do just that over the course of the weekend. More rain in scattered fashion next week. Periods of rain for the day today and isolated thunderstorm highs nearing 55 with that northeast to north wind increasing 20 to 30 and gusty. Windy tonight, occasional showers ending by midnight. Low down to 45 with a northwest to west wind, 15 to 25 and gusty. Tomorrow, partly sunny, windy, the high around 60. The west northwesterly wind, 20 to 30 and gusty. Diminishing winds later tomorrow night, clear and 43. For the weekend, turning breezy and mild or Saturday afternoon with sunshine, 71. 78 on Sunday, could be a couple of showers and thunderstorms breaking out Monday, more likely Tuesday. Wednesday next week, highs Monday and Tuesday up at around 80 degrees. For Stevie J Broadcasting, I'm Peter Greg Solgay. Ever wonder why you pay your bank to have a checking account fisher national bank does too you see they offer a free rewards checking cash back program that gives you cash back on debit card purchases with no service fees balance requirements you simply make a dozen debit card purchases receive electronic statements and have one direct deposit in a monthly cycle it's real simple reward yourself today with rewards cash back checking and you can learn more at any branch or fishernational.com fisher national bank exceptional community exceptional people member fdic welcome to dick van dyke appliance world hi i'm looking for a refrigerator and you buy from us you get the whole store oh yeah well i just need a refrigerator don't need the whole store but you get it the whole store my kitchen is only about this big you get me hello all those delivery installation and service technicians and back wow all those people the dick van dyke five ten year protection plan which means in the unlikely event something goes wrong in the first five years your repair cost is nothing nothing 10 years parts coverage on the major components. Looks like I'm getting more than the refrigerator today. Um, How much does this whole store cost? Nothing. Come on. For real. We guarantee to beat any competitor's deal, all that other stuff we talked about, like our service tax. And your 510 year protection plan. All included. I'm Dennis Freak and chairman of Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. And when we say you get the whole store, we mean the whole store. Wow. Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. 
right, eight fifty three. We appreciate y'all listening. Um, we we're about chiming out of time. in at yeah. three five nine twenty two fifty five. More comments about Coach Frank Dutton, who passed away. Muhammad Seymour uh, was a great coach and a role model as a husband, father, grandfather, and great grandfather. He will be missed. Taught us not only about football but good character and how to be good men on and off the field. Thanks for that, Andy. Yep. And Joe Somerville was my football coach mm-hmm. back in the day, and I felt the same about Joe. Same. Somerville kind of thing and Just, he's still kicking yeah he's doing well I, I think he's doing well I mean, Jeff was out right, here but, exactly. but, but uh, he and Sue and and uh, coach Somerville mm-hmm. was, was coaching when Frank Dutton was same, yes same time era but I remember Joe Somerville telling me any job worth doing is worth doing right. Yeah, there that's you right. He just had, and wrestling, too. Yeah, yeah, he was a really really good wrestling mm-hmm. coach. All right, we're uh, done, the boys, this afternoon, because we got bumped again yesterday for an hour with a baseball that's that they true. were on for an hour. That was a long baseball game. Yeah, there's, it's pitch clock, man. What's up? I know. We don't want these three-and-a-half-hour <laughs> games anymore. By um, the way, the bus trip is June 22nd. Yeah. You can text in bus if you want to head down to our bus trip to Bush. They take on the San Francisco. Francisco. Francisco Giants, 359-2255. Yep, and again, it's uh, San Francisco and the Cardinals, June 22nd. And thanks to First uh, Christian Church at Staley and Curtis are allowing us to leave from there. It's Mm -hmm. such a good launching site. That's right. For I-57 south to St. Louis. With a 115 start on a Saturday afternoon. And the uh, Stanley, Stan Musial... um, Tumblr. Tumblr. Yes. Yeah, that's a nice giveaway. Exactly. So you'll, we'll get you down there in time to get in there. Plenty of time that's to get one. Right. It'll be like 25000 uh-huh. in and out. So. All right, Diane, thank you. Enjoy the day. That's Diane Ducey. I'm Stevie J. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great Thursday. Kansas. Another Fork in the Road 50th Anniversary Tour. Celebrating 50 years of Kansas. With all your favorites and deep cuts, too. Friday, April 12th, the Virginia Theater. On sale now at thevirginia.org. The sounds of spring and the smell of flowers in the air, they all add up to Spring Green, America's neighborhood lawn care team. They become your favorite through quality, service, and professionalism. Spring Green will service and maintain your lawnscape with seeding, aeration, fertilizing, disease, and insect control. Over 32 years of satisfied customers reflect their commitment to Champaign-Urbana and the Mattoon Charleston area. Call Spring Green at 217-359-2111 or online at spring-green.com. Here's another home improvement insight from Kramer Siding and Window. New roofing and siding are a winning combination that can instantly change the look, feel, and function of your home. Our Kramer Siding and Window team takes pride in being an Owens Corning Platinum Preferred Contractor, able to offer a best-in-the-business 50-year warranty. Pair it with preservation siding in your favorite style and color, and your home will be a showstopper. Start today and save 10% on roofing and 25% on siding. Call us, click on KramerSiding.com, or visit the showroom in Champaign. An April tradition continues as the most powerful late models on the planet make a stop in Illinois. The World of Outlaws Case Construction Equipment Late Models are back at Farmer City Raceway for the Illini 100. Don't miss the World of Outlaw Superstars and the Extreme Outlaw Midgets on one big stage. Friday and Saturday, April 12th and 13th. Visit worldofoutlaws.com for the details. Invest in yourself and your money with a free rewards checking account from Fisher National Bank. Instead of losing a little each month in service fees and charges, wouldn't it be nice to earn on your money? Switch to Fisher National, where we offer 2.02 annual percentage yields on 